Hi, I'm Mark Stewart, Chief Engagement Officer at Neural Impact. In my previous video, we talked about some of the significant shifts we've seen in customer buying behavior and the impact that those shifts have had on partner marketing organizations. With prospects engaging late in their buying cycle and then extremely early in their research, it's put a tremendous amount of pressure on marketing organizations to create content that is both useful in getting found by them when they research, as well as keep them interested through nurture. So I'm gonna make an argument that prospects make emotional buying decisions and then rationalize them with logic. Right? And most people would agree that that is how we behave as human beings. There's a lot of science to support it. But when I talk to partners, when it comes to how they differentiate themselves in the market, right, what's their primary value proposition? They will generally tell me things like, we have a better product, uh, we have a better price point, uh, we have better people, and then, in many cases, we're just geographically desirable, we're local. Now you want to work with us because we're close. And what I know is that that is the domain of the logical mind. Right? That's the domain of the prefrontal cortex. Emotional decisions are rooted in you becoming a member of their tribe. Right? You speak their language, you service their industry. Uh, it's, about, it's about teaching them something about their business they didn't already know or how they could use technology to do something differently. It's about, about providing the lowest risk profile for them. Right? That's emotional differentiation. So when I think about building out an emotional messaging framework, we have to consider what is going to resonate with a prospect that drives them to start to look for a new system. And I believe there's five steps to it. The first step is industry drivers. Having an understanding of what is actually happening to prospects at an economic level, at a regulatory level, at a supplier level, at a competitive level, and then, most importantly, whatever is changing in their customer base, right? their customer behavioral shifts. Right? That's all external pressure that they can't control. But as things shift and change, new regulatory changes, right? changes in customer behavior, the economy starts to dip, suppliers change their agreements, all of a sudden that puts a tremendous amount of pressure on certain operating metrics. I call those the impact metrics. Now, if you have enough external pressure driving changes in your operating metrics, at the end of the day, at some point, it's going to lead to a trigger event. Every single system that you have ever sold in your life had a trigger event, had an emotional trigger event that compelled an organization to say, you know what, we don't want to experience that again. We need to start to look at a new system or some new technology. Right? So if we just work with the professional services as an example, a trigger event could be they lost a big customer, could be a huge write-off on a project. You know, it, it could be they lost a big bid. You know, it, it could be they've got their day sales outstanding at 92 days and they got no working capital in the bank. Every single trigger event has a high emotional charge. Now what falls out of that is a request for some functionality, at which point they would reach out and say, you know, can you help us with our collaboration? You know, can you help us with our fill in the blank? And then finally, there's the what column. Key features that the prospect absolutely critically needs to solve that business issue. Right, so think about that sequence. External industry drivers that put pressure on a business that lead to some form of uh, negative operating impact. Right? Out of that will fall eventually some kind of trigger event, a discrete moment that has a huge emotional charge which then leads to an interest in some form of business process functionality. And then there's some key features at the end of the day that need to be in the system for them to realize those benefits. The what followed by the how followed by the why. Right? So in support of this initiative, we put together some examples of what these emotional messaging frameworks look like. So to the degree that you as a marketing professional understand the external pressures that are forcing organizations to look at Office 365 and other Microsoft solutions was well, the degree to which you can create messaging that's going to resonate with them. And to the degree that you understand at the how and the what level what componentry they need so that they can avoid ever experiencing that trigger event again is the degree to which you can create the right content for them to consume at a nurture level. 
My belief is that when we have a fully fleshed out emotional messaging framework, and I've done this with dozens of companies all over the world, what that does is that then it allows us to make really intelligent choices about what IP do I want to invest in. Because if I understand, and there's generally only six to 10 trigger events in any given industry, what those are, well, that's probably where I want to direct my research and development dollars to build up a little bit of IP. And with an understanding of those emotional trigger events and external industry drivers, I'm probably going to drive some very different marketing messaging than I might have otherwise. And then finally, at a sales level, I'm probably going to drive a different type of sales dialogue and candidly build different sales assets with that understanding of that industry's emotional messaging framework. Right? So what I would encourage you to do is get your hands on the assets that we created for this initiative. Focus on at least one, maybe two industries that you know you're going to be focusing on moving forward. Build out that emotional messaging framework and then start to make the minor adjustments as it relates to the sales. And in a perfect world, start to invest in building out IP that differentiate you in the marketplace at an emotional level.